Hello, welcome to Social Media School. I am your host, Sonia Kilji. I am super excited to um, introduce today's guest. But before I bring her out, I just wanted to remind you that this is a new podcast. I am a social media expert, coach, consultant, agency owner with over a million followers. So please do show this podcast and my social media some love at Sonia Kelji. That's S-A-N-I-A-K-H-I-L-J-E-E. Today's guest is someone that I have met with before, but she has an incredible new project uh, that's happening right now, which is why I wanted to bring her back on for a conversation. Her name is Isabel Hunt, and she is a sociologist, a speaker, as well as the newest addition to her resume, filmmaker. Welcome, Isabel. Thank you so much for having me. I always love talking to you, and so I'm I'm excited to be back. <laughs> yes, I have, I think probably about a year ago yes. is when we had our first conversation and um, just watching everything that you're doing on social media has been such a joy because I'm also a speaker, I'm also a coach. And so for me to kind of see your journey kind of in a parallel space with a different niche has been interesting. And talk to me now about how and what led you to your newest venture of yes. trying to take on making a documentary. Yes. Well, um, I think what happened, as, as we know, the, especially the coaching industry has grown. And my background is in sociology and psychology, and I got into coaching about 10 years ago. And I just really felt a shift. I, I could feel a shift inside of me watching everything going on, especially online. I got a little tired, to be honest. And I knew something needed to happen for me to bring across my message in a different way so that I don't feel like I have to shout. So I had to think outside of the box a little bit. And so one night, I think I was watching something from our Kyle C's and suddenly I had this idea and I said, why am I waiting for someone else to give me permission to share my message in a bigger way or in a different way, totally different way that might be outside of my comfort zone, to be honest. And so I went to bed and I thought about it and then I talked to my husband about it and he said, well, why don't you put all your speeches together and create a documentary? And I looked at him like, yeah, you're nuts. <laughs> For one, I'm not a filmmaker. I don't know how to do all of that. So why would we bring up the idea? And I said, okay, I'll, I'll sleep over it. And then at night I had this dream where all the pieces were coming together. And I woke up in the morning and I knew exactly how this is supposed to look like, how I want this to be filmed. And suddenly I had all those ideas and thoughts and what is included in the work of creating a film. I don't know, maybe in, in one of my past lifetimes I was someone who did that professionally. I don't know, because suddenly I knew exactly what I had to do. But then there was the power of social media. And I think that's what we really want to talk about. Uh, it was incredible. Obviously, my, my following is not as big as yours. And I never really paid too much attention to it either. Yet is a very powerful following when you have the right people. And so in the morning, I was like how I always am. If something feels right, I just put it out there. I don't even think about it. I don't overthink it. That's when I know it, it is for me to do. And so I just put it out there and I said, you know what, guys? I feel like I need to think outside the box. I need to do something that really puts me on fire, like sets me on fire and, and just gets me in, in, in that excited state of being again. Um, and I want to do a documentary called The Power of Connection. I thought of a social study that I want to use from a socio sociology background. And this is what I, want to, what I want to focus on, shattering cultural barriers and also shattering social, political, and religious programming, what we're talking about within the documentary. And I have no idea how to finance this whole thing because I know the budget is probably between $100,000 and $200,000. But who wants to help? <laughs> so I did that on social media and suddenly I got emails from people. Hey, I think I know someone that I want to introduce you to who might be interested in that. And uh, so I reached out to that person. He was like, oh, I just 
I just meditated on, on the divine giving me some opportunities where I can serve with the gifts that I have in a different capacity. And I'm like, okay. And he, he's like, yeah, it totally resonates with me. I want to do that with, with you. And so I had my videographer. Then someone else read something else online and said, I need to introduce you to this and this person. She was involved in the music industry with script writing. And I think you guys would be great. She reached out. We were on board together within two weeks. I pretty much had the basic of my team together uh, without having even to worry about the finance part of it, the budget part of it. And then I had another uh, guy reach out and I knew he's really good at what he does. He's a cinematographer. So I was like, I can't pay him. So I can't really tell him, yeah, sure, come on board. Um, because I knew that probably would have been 30, 40,000 just for his part of the work. But he kept reaching out, reaching out. I just want to offer my help. I just want to do this. And I've never met any of them in person before. Yeah. Um, I really love the idea. I just feel a, a complete yes and the commitment to this project. And so he became our cinematographer and editor for this entire project. And now I even have an intern, a creative assistant. She wanted to know more about that. And she's also related to my script writer. And so um, it's, that was really the power of divine flow and social media where you just put something out there because everything is energy. And even when you understand that about social media and the online world and you just put it out there and you trust that something will come from it, it just happened literally within two weeks and we were able to start filming within a month after that, which is incredible on its own. <laughs> So, yeah. I'm going to deconstruct this um, because it's such an insane story. Yeah. And I, I mean, I almost need people to play it back. Yes. Like what exactly happened? Now, for people who don't know Isabel, she is intuitive and has access of understanding energy in a way um, that is far deeper than most average people, far deeper. Um, it is a gift that she has. And um especially especially in assistance to empaths, for example. I know you do a lot of work with empaths. Yeah. So fact is when she's discussing things such as energy and ideas, um, it's take note of that because she doesn't use those words lightly. So this idea came to her and oftentimes people have ideas. Oh, I wish I could do X, Y, and Z. And it's just that. That's where the inspiration starts and it stops. Now, you did not just let it start and stop. You then put it out there into the world. And that in itself, when you try to set an intention out there, I think social media is a phenomenal place to do that. Um, and in fact, I often do that as well too, where I almost use my social media platform as a journal to voice my echo, uh, to voice my ambitions, to voice my goals. And oftentimes people do touch and connect that can help that goal because I put it out there. So that is something that people need to take note of is the, the um, communication of intention, the communication of a goal that was done on social media and then the connection. People have a genuine desire to connect and to assist. And it wasn't just monetary that you were asking for at this point. You were asking for connections. And that is the most beautiful part of social media is the everyone is what, three to six degrees of separation? I mean, I don't know what the exact yeah. word is, but holy crap, you got a cinematographer, a music editor, filmmaker, like insane in one month, can people process this? I have personally loved seeing everything unfold for you. I, when you first put it out there, I'm gonna be honest, Isabel, I was like, what is she, what is she? Like, like, she are, up to now? <laughs> yeah, are people gonna actually jump in and help? Because it seems like she wants to do this, but do people care enough mm -hmm. to help? And that was my first thought. And then to see kind of what you've done, I was blown away. And so when you put your intention out there again on Facebook, like, hey, who wants to interview me on this? I was like, me, let's do this. So here we are today. And I just want to say like from the monetary aspect, did you notice people donating monetary as well too? How far away are you from your goal? 
we are far away from our goal. <laughs> um, it is a actually much harder to raise money online now because there are a lot of people asking and a lot of people creating fundraisers for various different projects so there needs to be a very strong message behind that so it has been a bit of a, a drag to be honest and a bit of a disappointment too because I thought there would be more especially friends behind it but a lot of people just watch until you're done and then they don't mind giving you money <laughs> because it's almost like well let's see if she really can pull that off and so we're trying to pull off the impossible which is fundraising in the midst of a global pandemic exactly listening to this episode a couple of months now, we're right in the midst of the coronavirus chaos, quarantines. I mean, every the world has gone to shit quite literally. So I'm sure. <laughs> um, talk to me about that, how that's impacting your project from a production standpoint. From a production standpoint, it's actually much better <laughs> because we can get where we want to go. People are off work and they have time. Like for example, we have filming coming up where we need a theater. And they said, yes, you can film it here, but you need to be done by a certain amount of time because, or after a certain amount of time, because we have screenings going on. Well, now all the theaters are closed, but because we have a small enough group, we can still get in. So we have an entire theater with 12 theater, odd, well, the, the rooms, whatever you call them, um, to ourselves for, 10 people wow. it's kind of nice so it's actually quite has been quite um positive for us from a filming perspective we get more done because people are more available we get more done in a shorter amount of time we don't have to uh run after everyone and just try to figure out times and days so that has been pretty positive on on my end to be honest as as bad as it is but it has been it's probably the silver lining of it all um but then again, like you said, raising money within those times, everyone is holding really tight on whatever they have because economical uh, insecurities, you don't know what's gonna happen. But yet I have found, and I think social media is really much in support of that, to just trust. Mm -hmm. There has not been once a moment within the last, what do we have now, uh, March, within the last five months that we've worked on this project, where we were short of anything. Wow. Uh, even with music, we have three artists that offered music to us. One is a hip hop artist, um, Quinn, Quinn Lynch. He is out of Denver. He's amazing. Um, Jackson Sutherland is an amazing local artist and um, another band who do uh, incredible work. And they all said, we want to be part of that. Here is a song that really fits the theme. And usually you have to pay a lot of money to get even the music for, for things like that. So it has been an incredible trust process. And I think social, without social media, we wouldn't have found the right people to contribute, who are willing to, com to contribute because they're so committed to the, to the message around the documentary. And so even though we, if we wanna have it done by the summer, I do need to pay some people because they need to pay their rent, uh, at least to some degree, as grateful as I am for them to say, hey, we really want to do that and we want to be behind that. But I trust that even that will come through. Like I said, even if it's through different interviews where we can get the word out or uh, people send me messages saying, hey, I found this grant for you, you can apply for that and you just do that or you know, maybe there is some connection to some celebrity who is within that field and says, you know what, I'll give you $50,000. Who knows, you know, um, the more you keep going, the more you talk about it, the, the bigger the chances that you find the people that are willing to support this whole thing. So I'm just really in this entire trust process. And I don't think without social media and having the right people um, with me, it, on my platform, it would have not happened the way it did. Even locations, uh, something really cool. Uh, we were looking for a house that we use as a metaphor for the subconscious. So we're telling a story about um, cultural prejudice and biases. It's the story that starts and 
Um, it's a real story actually that I experienced when I moved to the US 20 years ago. Um, for the first time, I was dating a, a black guy. And since I am white, since we're on a podcast, since I'm white and I'm from Germany originally, it was a totally different experience because all I knew about black people was what I knew from TV. And so there was a lot of biases, a lot of stories in my head. And so we're taking that story as the inspiration for the documentary. And then we're going into the subconscious and take apart why this has created so much disconnection just alone within that relationship, but also with other people culturally. And so the house, we have a beautiful house now that we found where we can film in, but we couldn't find a, a perfect house for the longest time, adding to it that we are in the Midwest, so it was cold. We needed something where we don't freeze for 10 hours filming, and it just wouldn't work out. At some point, I was so frustrated. I had a meeting. I went in the car. It, it was a dinner meeting. I got in my car and I said, all right. I'm done with this. This is getting too ridiculous. I'm just asking my spirit guides and whatever guides are out there, just find me the right house for this project. And then I posted it on social media and I said, please stand in agreement with me to find the perfect house for this film within the next two days so that we can stick with the filming day because since everyone is volunteering, they all have different work to do and it's really hard to find one specific time where we can all be right there. And we had the date already set and within two hours, within two hours, I had uh, several people tagged the same person saying, hey, I thought you have a house. I think this is going to be great. And she felt the push. She was in the middle of a session with her own clients. She felt like an intuitive pull responding to the messages thinking, oh, that seems really urgent. We talked the next day. We settled it. There were so many synchronicities. For example, she bought the house in August of 83 right before I was born, which was very interesting. Now everyone knows how old I am. <laughs> um, you look gorgeous. Was... <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, so it, it was very, there were just so many synchronicities with this house that I just had to say, yes, it is an, it's a beautiful old Spanish home with those dungeon doors, like it's those thick wow. wood, wooden doors that look like you're somewhere in a castle, um, brick on the inside, very beautiful. And it was just perfect for what we needed it to be um, for representing our subconscious mind. And we were able to, to shoot. And the great thing is the house is on the market. So we, as long as it's still in the market, we can go back in if we still need anything uh, or, yeah, just still have that connection to the house if there's something that we've forgotten. So it was the perfect, perfect connection and all within two hours and because of the power of social media and people who are really just connecting on social media because they truly want to connect with people. They truly want to just help without any um, subtle intentions coming with it. They never That's expected phenomenal. anything in return. That's phenomenal to me because like the, the filmmaker, that's a lot of time that's being invested. A yes. lot of time and energy, these musicians to be to giving up the rights to their work. This is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I have just a quick question for you. Roughly, how, would you, how many social media followers would you say that you have? Um, All together, I have about... 4,000, I believe. Okay, so it doesn't take 10,000, doesn't take no. 20, doesn't take 30, 40, 50, a million. She's doing this with 4,000 followers. Guys, the amount of energy and momentum that is on social media far transcends your number, your count of your following. I mean, and I'm going to wrap this up to really, or tie this into what I feel is I truly and honestly believe, Isabel, that the reason that this project came to you at this specific time was because these creatives will have more time available in the midst of this chaos and a sense of meaning and purpose that everyone is trying to find in the midst of this chaos. But furthermore, I mean, 
this is an inspiration to everybody out there. This is time where the world is slowing to a stop. Yes. What does that mean for you? What projects do you want to pursue that you've been putting off that seems too crazy? Put it out there. Put out what you want to do, what you want to make happen, and just collaborate. People are tapping into the creative energy that their nine to fives have concealed for so long. I mean, this is literally unprecedented time in our creative lifetime. And I just feel like I'm just so passionate and I'm so excited because I really don't know. Like, I understand it's scary, right? There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety, but I am so excited to see the creativity and the projects and the collaboration that emerge from within this time. I mean, truly and honestly, I'm excited for that. And I think yes. this story, Isabel, at this time is going to really touch a lot of people and it's going to make them say, you know what? I want to do this. And I'm going to tell you actually a story of just me three or four days ago, actually, um, a similar story to yours. There is a script that I, um, a screenplay synopsis mm -hmm. that came to me in the middle of the night, maybe three years ago. And um, I, I, I don't have time to pursue it because I'm trying to stay in my niche of social media experts. So I don't have time to write a fictional screenplay. However, I interviewed a actor for my podcast a couple days ago. And after the call, I was like, hey, can I just talk to you about this crazy burning idea that I've had? I pitched it. I didn't know what would happen. And he's like, Sonia, I feel so strongly connected um, to this idea. And not only that, I can imagine myself playing the lead. And I was like, you know what? You are like the real person. The, you are this character come to life for me. And that's why I told you this idea. He's like, you know what? I've worked with some directors. Let me put this out there and let's just see what we can make happen. So Isabel, you're not crazy for doing what you're doing. Yeah. I'm excited to see what happens for both of us, but particularly for me to be able to support your project. Just know that maybe I haven't reached out to you prior to this, but I am rooting from the sidelines. I see it and I have full faith that even if you don't raise, let's say the amount of funds, here's what I believe about social media. You can take a project with very little budget on social media and make it go viral. We are in times, I mean, I you're an author, a musician, a filmmaker, a blogger, a fashion blogger, I mean, just a cook, whatever it is, the reason that I'm passionate about social media is because we can take these, these passions, these projects, and we can make a name and an audience for ourselves and spread the message with a very small budget. So I'm excited to see, I again, agree. trust the process. Even if you don't yeah. reach that 50K number, this project is going places. That's um, what I believe. And I think that's the beauty that we are now stepping away from the meaning of what we have made money to be and the power that money has over us. And so I believe that especially our generations will understand the power of collaboration and community over the power of money. And I think this entire project shows exactly that, that you can do excellent work. Uh, I mean, we already have the trailer out. If anyone is interested, it's um, thepowerofconnection.net. If you want to take a look at the trailer, the trailer itself had uh, all together about 10,000 views. That alone was great. And you can do excellent work with, with the power of community. And I think that's what social media is teaching us, especially right now. So what are your, what is your, I guess, your dream for this project? What is like, the ultimate vision and end goal for this project? The ultimate vision is a little selfishly <laughs> to win some kind of award. Uh, we do want to submit it to some film festivals for the purpose of um, exposure especially but really what we want to do with the, the documentary since it's about uh, changing your perception or changing the world by changing your perception uh, that we want to take it to colleges and universities and do screenings of the documentary there and then include a Q&A where we really start talking conversations about what can we do personally, where can we take responsibility for ourselves and how we choose to connect with others so that we can truly create community that, that, that can operate from a place of collaboration and trust and connection 
And that's where we really want to start the conversation, especially with younger generations who, for whatever reason, seem to get it a little more. <laughs> um, and they have responded to this documentary so, so far very, very well. That's why I have, I think, a lot of younger people working on this project as well. And, and so that is the, the real, the, the big, big goal for us to, to start that conversation and to just um, create something beautiful with it. The trailer was chilling. Thank you. It was absolutely chilling. I, I really, and there was a photo that you shared, Isabel, of you in the house. Yes. Speak hate to yourself. And I actually got chills looking. That at was you. hard. That was, I'm not an actress, so that was hard. <laughs> I got chills. I, I really, truly, honestly did just know that I'm just, I know this is going to start conversations in ways um in in a really unique and interesting way i'm excited to also see the role social media plays in cultivating that conversation you know the hashtag yeah. the way people will be able to discuss this i'm excited for that um, because community and collaboration are so much more part of our world now in 2020 online than ever yes. before. So Isabel, do you have any final takeaways for creatives online on how to get volunteers and collaboration and funds for their projects that they are envisioning, especially in the midst of these times? Well, I think when it comes to funds, I need help myself. <laughs> so I'm not an expert in that, but I, I really just I think what, especially with creatives, I, I want to encourage them to, to just create a vision and a vision bigger than just, I want to write a song and I want to be famous. Something that really has a, a purpose and a mission behind it. Why do you want the song to go viral? What is the message of it? How can that really reach people's hearts and souls and how can it connect with people? Really become very clear what your true intentions are behind what you want to create and what you want to achieve. And then just put it out there and say, I have this crazy idea. This is why I want to do it. Do I have someone or know I have someone who can support me with this project or who would just like, like to get involved? Um, any other ways? Like, you never know what comes from that because there might be that one person who knows someone who knows someone who totally is on board and can even come up with the finances that you need for it. And even if you don't have the finances, the great thing is you can still trust that it's still going to come to fruition somehow in some ways. And it's a good lesson of trust and perseverance and knowing that if it is meant to be, it will be out there in, in any way possible. It's, it's going to happen. And where can people find out more and follow more along with this uh, film and documentary process? Like, I know people are going to want to, you know, keep updated with when it's going to come out, where you're at with it and support it, hopefully. Uh, where can they find more? Yes. Uh, the website is thepowerofconnection.net. You can find the trailer there. You can sign up for updates or receiving updates and where we're at. I share uh, behind the scene footage as well and, and photos and yeah, all of that. But there's also the link to if, if someone does say, hey, I, I do want to contribute, even if it's five dollars, I would love to do that. Um, we are grateful for any of that, even one dollar. <laughs> you never know. I mean, if you have ten thousand people donating a dollar, you got it. Um, you know, and there's also the team. Um, so everything is on the website. And if anyone wants to connect with me personally, that's my personal website, isabahunt.com, where you can connect with me on social media, where I share a lot of the work as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Isabel, for sharing this phenomenal and hopefully very inspiring story about taking a crazy leap of faith, following yes. this idea, following the inspiration, um, utilizing social media to bring a team together. I am rooting for this project. I will definitely be watching this film when it premieres, not if, but when it premieres. Thank yes. you, Isabel, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Thank, Thank you. you so much, you as well.